Okay guys, um, right, so what I'm going to do then is review your video footage. Um, the way the system works is it basically records everything that I do on the computer and everything I say. So it's not super snazzy, um, but what it does allow me to do is to have full, full flexibility in terms of bringing in demos and other videos and, and all sorts of stuff. So you'll get the whole lot. You'll get the phone ringing, the dog barking, the cat meowing and, and all sorts of things. <clears throat> but um, if you can just bear with me, um, hopefully you'll get some value out of the, the video. Um, I'm going to do all four of you together. Um, it's easier that way. I, mean, I think you will actually benefit from um, seeing the, the feedback that I've been given to the other swimmers as well. Because quite a few of you got similar faults and they're related uh, faults and things like that. So you'll, you'll gain from uh, watching the other, the other swimmers' feedback too. Um, right, so what I want to do then first of all is just play the videos through um, and make some comments over the top and then we'll we'll go through again and start talking about how we can uh, address some of the issues that have been spotted. Okay, so first of all we've got Steve Donnelly. Just wait for him to set off. So the first thing I'm looking for really, um, this kind of view is not the best. This is kind of poolside view. This is the view that everyone looks pretty good at. Um, but what it does show is how much head movement there is. Um, when Steve's faced the other way, we can see what his mouth and what his face is looking like and, and how high he's lifting his head. Um, and also things like what the arm recovery looks like and the hand entry and things like that. So in a second, Steve will set off and we'll have an underwater view. Once you uh, get past me messing about with the camera. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at with Steve really is um, the head position, like I say, and the breathing. Okay, now I can see Steve is holding his breath a little bit there, and what he's doing, because he's fairly low body position, he's being forced to lift his head to breathe, and what that's doing is it's causing the rest of the body to, um, to sink down, the legs to sink down, which makes the problem worse and creates drag. Okay, we'll come back to Steve in a second. Next one, we've got Mark. Now, what we can see from Mark is the classic high head, high head even, um, kind of gasping for air look. When we're looking at swim correction, start with the head, start with the breathing, okay? And we can see there that we need to be uh, working on Mark's breathing and relaxation in the water. And that is going to make quite a substantial difference to the way that uh, the way that Mark swims. Okay, so we've got Mark underwater this time. Okay, so what we can see here again is is Mark lifting his head to breathe and then coming back down, lift to breathe, coming back down. And a very slow stroke rate. Both Steve and Mark have a fairly slow stroke rate, which is something we can look at. Now, the slow stroke rate means there's not much propulsion there. And Mark has a bit of a pause in his stroke, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, all those things cause the fluidity and the rhythm of the stroke to drop. And, um, and the legs to start to sink as a result, causing, causing drag. Again, sink things that we can work on quite easily. Uh, and not not a problem is once we uh, once we kind of start to target that. Okay, Becky. Becky has very naturally good body position. You see Becky's bottom. Sorry, Becky. Um, on the surface of the water, there very high body position. Um, oh, that pause there, just at the right time. Lifting the head a little bit too high still. Again, lifting the lifting the head high causes the uh, the legs and the back the kind of the back end of the body, if you like, to sink down. Okay, and from under the water, you can see again 
Becky's body position is naturally very good. The bottom's just touching the surface of the water there. So for Becky, again, stroke rate needs to be looked at. And it's more about propulsion and a bit of head positioning and breathing as well, but more about propulsion um, with Becky. I think what I'll do at that point is bring in Emil. So we're all at the same point with um, with all with all of them. Okay, so again, Emil's stroke looks nice and rhythmical, actually, nice and fluid. Body position doesn't look too bad. It's got a kind of a head motion which looks fairly forward. Decent amount of rotation on the left hand side. Again, a fairly slow stroke rate, again, which is something we can look at. Emil's turning his head quite a long way to breathe. We're seeing both goggles and full, pretty much full face out of the water. So again, a fairly good body position, natural body position, which is a really good place to be. Emil's bottom's just touching the surface of the water there. Once we improve the pull propulsion, then that body position will come further up further still. Emil's holding his breath. See a bit of breathing out there towards the end, but we'll have a closer look at that in a second. So again, for Emil, it's the um, same as everybody really, head positioning and breathing. Um, work on some propulsion and increase, increase the stroke rate. Everybody in terms of the kick needs a bit of work. Um, so again, that's something we can look at. So I'll pause it there and I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so that's where we are so far. Um, let's continue to play this through. So what I'm looking at here then um, is what's happening to the arms and the pull stage. Now you saw Steve there, quite a straight arm pull through. Mark, same thing. When he breathes, losing the left hand is losing um, purchase on the water and is collapsing down. And Becky's got quite a straight arm pull through, a little bit of lack of rotation. Swimming through someone's bubbles there. And if we get to the same point with Emil, uh, where are we? Sorry. Oh blimey, get a bit confused there. Let's see if we can find the same point for them all. Here we go. Trying to find the underwater shot for Emil. There we go. Okay, so a straight arm pull through. Actually, not too bad there, but when Emil breathes. The, the arm, the pull through uh, and the, is, is much straighter than it should be. Okay, I'll just pause that one there. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. So if we go back to uh, you three guys, this is the overhead view now. Now this is the view which there's no from which there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> this is uh, this is what shows us a, gives us a lot of information about how the stroke um, stroke is. Okay, so if we play this through. So, not too bad actually in terms of um, the direction that the arms are travelling in. Um, they're entering fairly 
well straight-ish, there is certainly a little bit of kind of crossing over towards the centre line. Not excessive, not too bad, but what it is doing is it's causing the legs to scissor kick each time it happens. And again, we'll go through this in a second in a bit more detail. Let me fast forward this a bit. Okay, same thing for Mark then. Again, not too much crossing over, not too much. Um, but I think the biggest problem here is the lack of support on the lead arm. Again, it's causing the legs to scissor kick, and again, scissor kicking causes the back end to drop. A little bit of crossing over again from Becky, same kind of thing. Becky's legs aren't scissor kicking quite so much because she's got much more of a faster bit, um, leg kick. So it naturally won't be able to scissor kick quite the same at the same degree. There we go again. So if we go back to Emil then, it was up here somewhere, wasn't it? I think. All right. Okay, a little bit of crossover again, a little bit of leg scissor kicking, and a, a generally a weak kick there. Um, so that's definitely something that can be worked on. Okay, so that's everyone seen from all different angles. So what we'll do now is we'll break break things down to a little bit more detail. So if we take this back to the beginning then. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to repeat the same things for all four all four guys um, and girls. Um, There's just no point doing that. So I'm going to show you some clips and some um, some drills and things like that as we go. Um, this will apply equally to uh, to pretty much all of you, really. Um, and this is part of the stuff that we'll be going through as part of the four the four weekly sessions. I'm quite happy to go through this footage individually with you if you want me to. Just give me a shout, and we can do that. And we can do some kind of bespoke um, some drills, which are actually spe more specifically for you. Um, right. So let's start to play this through. Okay, so Steve is breathing purely to the right-hand side at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if you do bilateral breathe at all, Steve. Um, there's definitely benefits to be had from doing that. Um, what it does is it balances up the stroke um, and it allows you to breathe more freely. When you breathe on one side, you only have one option. You can breathe every second stroke or every fourth stroke or every sixth stroke, which is a bit, a bit too much. Um, every second stroke is too is, is, is too frequent. You'd see sprinters maybe breathing every second stroke, uh, but certainly not distance athletes. You should be a nice, relaxed rhythm. To see what happens when you come back down this way. Speed it up a bit. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is just see what kind of hap what's happening to your head position here. Okay, right. So we get too far past now. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So what we're seeing here is Steve taking a breath. Both eyes are out of the water here. Both the face, pretty much the full face out of the water. It's not too bad. But what you can see, of course, is the body position here is fairly low. The surface of the water is up here and the body is, is sinking down. That is largely due to um, largely due to Steve having to lift his head up. As soon as you lift your head up, then the bottom end will sink. What we'll also have a look at in a minute is how much um, how much breath holding is going on. When you hold your breath, what happens is the oxygen in your lungs, the air in your lungs causes the upper body to come up. And then again, that has a seesaw effect, which causes the legs to sink. Okay. Um, so if we're lifting the head and we're holding our breath, as you can imagine, there's a lot of um, uh, elements, if you like, dragging the front end of the body up, which again, forces the back end of the legs down. If this is much more horizontal, if you weren't having to lift your head and you're much more flatter on the water, you know, your body position would be up in this kind of area here. 
So in terms of head positioning, um, so what this is, this is Swim Smooth website, which I use all the time because it's full of great videos and demos and pictures and things like that. Um, so what I'm looking for, I'm going to show you here, is Popeye. Popeye breathing. Okay, so you can see those images there. Look, that's that's um, Paul Newson from Swim Smooth. That's what your head should be doing. You should have one eye in, one eye out the water, one eye in, and you should be moving your head or moving your mouth like Popeye to one side, so it's out the water and you breathe because that will allow you to not have to lift your head quite so high. And it's almost like split vision. So you should have one goggle you can see under the water, one goggle can see over the water. What you also do is you breathe into the bow wave. Okay, so when you keep your head nice and low and you're not popping up and down with your head, as you can see here in this picture here, it creates a bow wave. And that allows you to breathe just behind the bow wave here. Okay. Now, if your head's going up and down, up and down, up and down, you don't get that bow wave. It gets it gets wiped out every time you put your head back down again. So if you keep your head in the same position, you will eventually have this bow wave created. It needs a bit of bit of propulsion, which will come as well, uh, but that will allow you to um, to not have to lift your head so high. So the next thing I'm going to do is look for Steve's breathing. So Steve's just taking a breath there. And he's turning his head. And you can see his face there. No oxygen, no air coming out. So all that lung, all that air he's just taking in is all in here. Pulling the body up, causing the legs to sink. A little bit of air coming out there. You can tell when he's properly exhaling because you'll see a big plume of air come out. Okay, still not much coming out there. Still not much coming out. And there, you can just start it to see it coming out as he starts to take a breath. Still not a huge amount, it must be said. So I think you're holding a lot of air in your lungs, Steve. You're holding a lot of air in your lungs, all in here. And you can almost see it the way your body is upright like this. And then you're taking another breath. So you haven't really exhaled. And what that causes is a build of build up of CO2. And this kind of sensation where you're you're starting to feel it's a bit kind of a stressful way of swimming. You're always on edge, you always haven't quite got enough oxygen going in and going out. So breathing is a big one for you, sorting out the breathing and sorting out the head position. Okay. You are breathing out a little bit, but I think most of it comes out in the latter half of the stroke, whereas you should be breathing out constantly. Let's see if I can find a um, uh, a picture of. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm trying to find some footage of, see if there's any underwater shots. Yeah, I'm trying to find some images of some constant exhalation, but uh, there isn't any on there. Um, Bear me two seconds. Okay, so this is a clip I was trying to find um, of John o. Van Hazel. Um, this is uh, one of Paul Newsom's clips, uh, and he gives quite a good explanation about um, constant exhalation and breathing and things. So I'll just play this for you to uh, to have a listen to. Check out John o.'s excellent exhalation process underneath the water. He uses a combination of the mouth and the nose, but it's consistent like he's sighing in the water. Jono is breathing every three strokes in this video clip, i.e. bilateral breathing. By blowing out smoothly underneath the water, it helps him reduce some of the buoyancy in the chest and lungs, 
in order to lift his legs up at the back. Okay, so pretty much what I said really, um, constant exhalation, you see a constant stream of bubbles coming out of his mouth and it's nice and relaxed. Okay, so that's what we want to be seeing. That's what we want to be seeing all the time. Okay, so we can work on that. That's not a problem. Not a problem at all. Okay, so So we move on to Mark. Mark's breathing on the left hand side. So that's what I was referring to earlier, the, the kind of lifting of the head and the gasping for the air. And it's a similar thing for both really. Um, we need to work on the relaxation, the breathing technique. Uh, this is vital that we get this right to get this head position down and to get relaxation. You want to be relaxed when you're swimming. You want to enjoy the process and not feel like you're fighting the water. Um, so same kind of thing, both head out the water too high. And it's causing the body to sink. It's causing the back end to sink. I'll play this through. We can talk about the catch and, and things like that shortly in the arm recovery, that's not a problem. But the main thing for me is to get the head position, the breathing sorted out. Um, and then we can look at the stroke rate and the propulsion side of the stroke as well. If I fast forward it to uh, underneath. Okay, so let's see if we can see what's happening when Mark breathes. So Mark's taking a breath there, puts his head into the water. There's a little bit of oxygen coming out. But there's no, there's nothing there. There's just bubbles. He's swimming through. He's holding his breath. All that, all that air is in his lungs. All that air is still there, and you can just see it starts to come out at that point. And then bang, you can see the air coming out. So Mark's breathing out just as he's about to breathe in. So he's a out in, out in kind of motion rather than a breath and a constant breathing and a sighing out like um, like the clip you were just shown. And that's why, Mark, having to lift your head so high, because you've almost got to breathe out and breathe in in the same motion. It's hugely important that we get that looked at. Okay. Again, same kind of thing, causing the legs to drop down here. Okay. So if we take it through to Becky. Take that back. Good shot of Becky's face. Doesn't like going backwards this system very much. I've already mentioned uh, Becky's body position seems to be naturally good, but we'll have another look at that in a second. Okay, it's going to go way past now. There we go. Doesn't mind going forwards in slow motion this system, but not so keen on going backwards. There we go. Goes forwards, okay. Right, so we pause it there. Same kind of thing. Got a little bit of Popeye mouth going on there, but still the full face out of the water. Okay, again, causing the legs to drop down. And then face back in. Let's have a look swimming the other way. So Becky's breathing. And then what I'm looking for again here is what's happening to the breath here. There's a little bit coming out the mouth there. And it's not too bad. You can see the constant stream of bubbles. That's what we want to see. Constant stream of bubbles coming out. That's very good. So you are breathing. See, if you just take that back a little bit. Becky, Becky's taking a breath there and immediately breathing out immediately breathing out, constantly under the water, that's really good. Okay, bilateral breathing, which is good. Head under the water. Now you're breathing there, you're taking a breath. There's nothing much coming out at this point. Oh, there, there you can see it coming out. So the breathing's pretty good, Becky. When I was talking about body position, look at that, 
your bottoms on the surface of the water there. Arms nice and straight. That's good. It's good. So we continue to play it through. You've got a strong leg beat kick. We can work out the efficiency of the kick. That's not a problem. But again, for you, Becky, um, head position to a degree. And it's more kind of body positioning and propulsion aspects we're looking at with you. Um, so if we go to Emil. Breathing to the right hand side each time. Oh, there's one to the left there, so you can bilateral breathe. Let's roll that through. Again, full face out of the water. Not too bad, not lifting too high actually. You're not lifting too high, your head's not moving too much. In fact, while I think about it, if I just show you this clip of. Um, John o. Van Hazel again. Just to emphasize the point in terms of how still your head should be. All right. If you keep an eye on John O's head here. You can almost balance a bottle of wine in the back of his head, or a glass of wine in the back of his head, even when he breathes. So his head perfectly still all the time, just turns to breathe. Doesn't move. Constant head position. Okay. There's another shot when he comes comes down towards the pool. There we go. So if you watch this, see how he's still his head. It's incredible. His body rotates around his head. That's the ideal. This guy's an Olympic swimmer, to be fair. So uh, you'd expect him to be good. Okay. So that's what we want to be aiming for. Okay, so back to where we were. So underwater then, Emil. Let's see what we've got here. This is the value of the underwater shots because we can see what's happening in so much detail, um, particularly on the breathing side of things and the, the body positioning. So you're taking your breath and then you're putting your head down. You can see some air coming out of your mouth, to be fair, at that point. I lifted it out because the swimmer went past. Let's go back in in a second. Okay, so taking your breath. And to be fair, again, it's a nice steady stream of bubbles coming out, which is good. So not too much of a breathing issue, although saying that, to that point. You're breathing on that side, so you're breathing to the left. Holding. You can see your mouth almost clenched shut at that point. And then bang, you see the air coming out there. So you've held that breath. Let's see if I can take this back. So that's when you're breathing in. In fact, what we've got here is, so you're breathing in, and yeah, breathing in, so that's 6.5, 6.58. So you're breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, and then you start to breathe out there. 
So you're holding it, you're holding your breath for so it's 7.58. So you're holding your breath for it's not a huge amount, it's only a, a split second, but that can be enough. You, you know, think about the amount of strokes you take, you're holding your breath in your lungs quite a long time at that point. Okay, so let's continue to play this through. Body position's not too bad actually. Body position is not too bad. Emil's bottom's not far off the surface of the water. Fairly fist, fairly quick leg beat, leg kick. Okay, so next thing we'll look at then is um, the uh, overhead view. See where the overhead views start. There we go. So this will be Steve, the overhead view first of all. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff we can see on this angle. So the first thing we look for is how much crossover there is in the arms. Okay, so what we want to be seeing is we want to be seeing a nice straight arm entry and extension out. If I go back to um, If I go back to Jono, just as an example, I use this guy a lot because clearly he, uh, he's got an amazing stroke. So arm entry, and it extends ahead as he swims and stays straight, okay? If you look at his arm, it stays straight, and then, so that's a bit glitchy, and then pulls straight back as the catch, okay? There's no crossing over this way with the left arm, uh, sorry, with the right arm, or left arm, and this way, with the right arm, okay. Um, so when I say crossing over, none of you do it too badly actually. Um, so I want the arm to be entering the water in front of the shoulders and extending forward. So there should be some rotating rotation there. What we have got you with you, Steve, is you're quite straight. You're quite flat. Your back is quite flat across the water. You should be rotated at that point. So you do rotate there. In fact, no, I take that back. That's a little bit early. I take that back. Ignore that. So you're rotating to breathe. If anything, you're over rotating. It should be 45 degrees. You're more or less vertical at that point, which is why you're turning your your head is so far out of the water. So if you turned your head 45, your body was 45 degrees, your face wouldn't be quite so far out of the water. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't have so much of an issue of the full face being shown. So your leading arm has gone in. And then what we're seeing here is it's kind of collapsing down underneath you and it's not providing much support for you to breathe. So your next arm comes in and then what I'm looking for here is what's happening with this hand. It's pointing over in this direction rather than straight forward. If you think when you swim you want everything to be going in the direction you're travelling in. You don't want anything to be going sideways or anything other than straight, because that causes you to slow down and creates drag. So we can straighten out this. This is all body positioning and rotation um, issues. So breathing. So at that point, looking pretty good. Arms nice and straight, legs are together. And then what happens is your arm starts to sink. And because your arms link sink in, you haven't got the support, then it's causing a bit of a scissor kick here. And then you're causing, you're kind of count compensating by crossing over with the other arm. So everything just needs to be straightened up in simple terms. Everything needs to be straightened up. All right, let's have a look at Mark. Okay, so, oh, hang on a minute, that's still you Steve, sorry, right Mark, okay, so 
what we've got with you, Mark, is you're lifting your head quite high to breathe because of this gasping kind of air thing that we've been talking about before. If you look about what front, what I'm looking for here is is front front, what they call front quadrant. You should always have an arm in the front quadrant. The front quadrant is, as the name suggests, is the front part of the stroke here. So at this point, you've got nothing here. Okay. So your body hasn't got any any support there for you to lean against, for you to breathe. You imagine if you put your arm out straight, when you push down the water, it provides some stability for you to turn and breathe. If you've got nothing there because your arm has collapsed underneath you, then you're going to sink down, which means you've got to lift your head even higher to get your head out of the water to breathe. Okay. Um, again, if we have a look at um, Jono here. Find a stroke where he breathes, okay? Here we go. In fact, you can't see it. Let's try it from the other way around. There. So he's breathing there. But where his lead arm is, his lead arm is out straight, okay? He's taking a breath. Sorry, it's not very good on this thing. I think what we'll do is we'll if I get rid of that. Let's bring him in here. Let's just find the spot. Here we go. So, in fact, you can see it there. Popeye breathing, head bow wave, breathing into the hair wave, bow wave, lead arm straight. Now, in fact, his arm, his recovery arm is in a similar kind of point in the stroke to yours, Mark. Um, but if you look, You've got nothing there. Your arm is already underneath the water. Okay, so we need to get you used to breathing with the lead arm out straight. And these are drills: the six one six, um, six three six, kicking on the side, and things like that. Are exactly the drills that we should we need to be working on for you. Um, let's continue to play this through. So a little bit of lack of rotation there. Okay, so quite flat in the water. Your arm is coming over slightly. So it's going over in this direction. What that does is causes your legs to scissor kick to balance up the stroke. Okay. Let's get rid of John O for now. Uh, right, okay, so we move on to Becky. Get rid of that. Okay, so Becky's arm is entering, entering the water. What should happen here is it should be rotation, that arm should extend forwards, which it is doing. Still there. If we talk about, remember Mark, we talk about having a hand in the front quadrant. Becky's arm is still there. This next arm is coming over and then taking its place. Okay. A little bit of inward cross, inward rotation here. So you want to be straight out, extending in front of the shoulder rather than coming over this way. Pulling out wide, pulling down straight. Okay. Um, but there is a little bit of front quadrant timing issue there as well. So if we draw a line there, look, there's not a huge amount there. Not too bad, not too bad. There's a big breath there, look. Big breath. The lead arm is collapsing down a little bit. 
which is means again you're having to lift your head higher which means your legs are scissor kicking to provide that support. You guys have all got very similar kind of faults actually. They're all things which are related to body positioning and breathing. The coat, the um, the 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 um, uh, the arm entry and the catch um, and the pull through and the propulsion elements of the stroke are something we can look at in the future. Um, for now, it's more the kind of body positioning and the timing issues and things like that. So, if we have a look at Emil. Uh, From above, let's try and find the above shot. Okay, so let's see what we've got with Emil then. So arm entry. Arm should be staying out straight. There's the rotation. Bit of downward pressure under the water. What we're seeing, what we see with Emil a little bit, and it's the same with you guys, the rest of you guys really, is is a certain amount of um, kind of twisting of the body. Um, so in general, the kind of body position is is curving round. So rather than being nice and straight, you're curving round this in this kind of direction. I suspect the biggest issue for your propulsion ML is going to be the um, is going to be the catch and the, the arm position under the water. Not too bad. I mean, the, of the four of you, there's not a huge amount of crossover. Some people cross over terribly, but um, your crossover isn't too bad. There's a little bit there, but that can be sorted out, sorted out fairly, uh, fairly simply. Okay, so what we've got so far then, just to recap, is um, looking at breathing, looking at head position, and then looking at body positioning, um, particularly when you're breathing. So again, um, so breathing, sink down drills, getting that relaxed breathing, and bilateral breathing, getting you to work on being comfortable bilateral breathing. Um, and in conjunction with that, working on body positioning, such as kicking on the side and 616636, um, and a few other drills which we can work through as, as things progress. Right, so if we go back to you first, guys. So what I'll look now is underneath the water. In fact, well, yeah, we'll have a look under the water and have a look at... Um, leg kick and the catch. Okay, so Steve, Stevie D. Let's get this camera under the water. Now, when we're looking at swim correction, as I said before, it's a sequence of events, okay? So we will start off at the front end of the stroke and the body positioning. We do that because other things naturally improve if you improve those those elements. Um, so you will improve your catch and your pull if you're in if your body positioning is better and allowing you to take um, a better hand entry and sets you up for a better catch. Um, so things do kind of natural follow a natural sequence of events. Um, so it's not it's not there's no point working on just the catch if the body position and the head position and things like that uh, need work. Um, you can do a few things simultaneously, but it's worth concentrating on a few key elements. Otherwise, you almost have too much to think about. And I'm sure you've you've been doing swimming lessons and swimming drills and things in the past where you've tried to think of anything more than one or two things um, at any one time. Um, it makes the whole thing quite difficult for you to try and remember. So what I'm looking at this time around then is your kick. Okay. Now, runners, triathletes and runners and age group swimmers, um, age group triathletes particularly, don't have the strongest kick in the world. Um, 
And what I'm looking for here is the flexibility of the ankles. And Steve, you've clearly got flexibility because look how straight that is. That's lovely and straight. Okay. So you do have the flexibility of the ankles, but what we want to be doing is we want to be having the ankles like that all the time. If you look at this, this other foot, and now you see what's happening there. So you've got you go from having a fat <laughs> a flat, not a fat foot, a flat foot. And then as you continue through the kick, you end up with um, anchor feet. So your feet are straight down. We want to have kick, we want to have, um, pointing toes all the time, ideally. So again, you can do it there. Look, nice and pointed. And then as you kick down, it flattens out. Okay. So we can work on the efficiency of the kick, the actual kick action itself, and flexibility of the ankles, and keeping those toes kicked, uh, toes pointed, is something that we can definitely work on. Um, torpedo drill is one for you can one for you to consider. We can look at that when we go through the training. Um, tapping the toes together, which makes you think about keeping those po toes pointed. Okay, so that's just really the kick efficiency we need to look at there. If we have a look at uh, Mark, try and find Mark underwater. Hopefully we'll scan back in a minute. Okay, I suspect it's a similar kind of thing. So you're, you're kicking quite deep in the water, but that's because of your body position. Um, again, you are capable of kicking, keeping your feet quite straight. Exactly the same as Steve, really. But during the recovery phase of the kick, in fact, there's no kick there at all. Look, your legs are just pulling behind you. Um, you both your legs are together. So what you're doing is when you're, because you've got a little bit of a pause in your stroke, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And when you have a pause in your stroke, what you'd almost have is what you call a kick start. So you'll have a, you, you'll have a pause in your kick, and then when you have a pause at the front end and you want to start get going again, you put in a big kick, and that's what this kick is here. But the rest of the time, your legs will stop. You have a point in your stroke there. And it coincides with you taking a breath, I think. We just run this through. So you take a breath. Look what happens to your legs. So when, in fact, when you're just about to take a breath, you stop kicking, so they're still together. Take your breath, then you have your pause and your stroke, and then you give a big kick to restart. Okay, so this is all about rhythm and timing, getting some timing into your kick, and that's just kick practice. In fact, if you look at pause and your stroke, this is the pause I'm talking about. So your arm has entered the water. If you look at this leader hand, so the, the hands should never be still. They should either be entering the water, traveling down, traveling backwards, and then leaving the water again. So your hand has traveled into the, has come into the water. Now if you look at your hand here, it's still staying exactly where it is, still staying where it is, still staying where it is. And then you're thinking, oh right, I better take a stroke now. Still staying where it is. And then it starts to move. Okay, so you've got quite a lengthy pause in the stroke there. And in fact, we can Sorry, Mark, I'm gonna time it. Okay, so your hands entered the water, so thirty three point one five. So it hasn't moved, so it's just moving forward, it's not doing anything positive. Still not doing anything positive. And then it starts. So 33.8. Okay, so your hand is not moving for over half a second per stroke. Imagine how much propulsion your propulsion propulsion your um your you're not losing, you're just not getting it um, from that pause. Okay, so we need to get that get rid of that pause in your stroke. Um, again, there's some drills that we can work at work on for that. Um, swimming with paddles. 
um, will will help you get your hand in the right position, and then we can do some timing um, and swimming with some bands at some point, um, which will get rid of that dead spot in your stroke. You can see you put your hand forward as well. Anyway, so we'll go back to the legs. We'll go back to the legs. Otherwise, we'll uh, get all out of sync. Right, Becky. Okay, so what we're looking at here then is kicking from the knee quite a lot. Okay, so you've got a bend in the knee. Oops. So you've got quite a big bend in the knee there. So you want to be kicking from the hips, kicking from the hips with pointed toes. Okay. So again, you've got a reasonable amount of ankle flexibility there. Your foot is kind of nice and straight, but again, when you recover the kick, your feet are coming down. Okay, not too bad, but um, there's a little bit of improvement there. But for you, it's mainly the kicking efficiency and the kicking motion. So you can see it kicking from the knee quite a lot. Not excessive, but there's certainly amount of quite a lot of flexibility at the knee there. Let's see if we can. Um, uh, we can show you an example of a decent kick here. Um, well, let's just bring John in. Just find a decent shot in the. Um, trying to find an underwater shot. Hmm. Here we go. Let's pause it there. See, Jono will keep his toes pointed all the time, all the time. It's not ideal, that clip, but uh, you could just see it for a little while then. Okay, Emil, let's have a look at you underwater, your kick. Quite a weak kick. Um, there's not a huge amount of actual kicking kind of going on. It's a little bit of a flutter there, and it hasn't got much rhythm to it. Again, that's something which we can work on uh, and may improve when we sort out the rest of the stroke rhythm. Yeah, so you have a a little kind of flutter to your kick. Toes are pretty pointed. Toes are staying pretty pointed most of the time, which is good. But they're kind of yeah, this is, this is a kind of fairly difficult to describe really. But it's not it's not a positive kick. They're kind of just moving in in motion in relation to your arms more than anything. So definitely some kick work there. Okay, so what we'll finally move on to then um, is some is have a look at the at the front end of the stroke. Okay, so if we go back to the first bunch of guys. Now bring in mind what I'm doing here is I'm going through kind of quite a lot of stuff. Um, now I'll speak to you again, I'll speak to you all separately if you speak, if you come and have a chat to me about the kind of the best order to do this in. We'll cover it in a lot of the, uh, the weekly sessions anyway. Um, but I'm trying to cut, touch on all the key points. Now you can't fix everything at the same time, so it is really a case of, of knowing in which order you're going to look at things. Um, but just so you, because you've got this video here, you will have a lot of stuff kind of covered on it um, and it will take you a while to kind of get through it all. I hope that kind of makes sense, really. Okay, so we'll run it through then. So what I'm going to look at now is just the front end of the stroke. And again, just touching on a lot of this is kind of affected by 
um, items we will be looking at quite early on in terms of your body positioning. So what we're looking at here is hand entry. That's quite a nice hand entry. You've got fingertips coming in first. This is Steve. Quite a nice high elbow. Arm is entering the water and then we'll have a look into the water in a minute. So the recovery arm comes over. High elbow. A little bit of thumb first entry there, but again, that would be addressed if we check, if we look at the body positioning. And again, it's something we can work on. We don't want to be inward, inwardly rotating, rotating the hand. We can see that the palm is facing outwards here. It should be flat, like the um, like the other hand is. If we show this one, this one comes in nice and flat and spears in. That's exactly what it should be doing. Spears in the water, and then the re the left hand comes in, twisted out. Okay. So we want to balance that up. That's all we need to kind of look at at that point. Um, if we have a look at Mark. Now Mark, you've got something quite different going on here because you haven't got a huge amount of rotation. Your arm is coming in quite flat. You see your elbow is coming in, if anything, slightly before the hand. And on this side, Again, thumb first entry, your arm is coming down flat, and that's what's causing all this splash. This will be vastly imp improved once we look at your um, your body positioning and your rotating, your rotation. On the right, same thing, coming in flat, which is causing the splash. If you look at efficient swimmers, they don't cause any splash. They're so smooth through the water. And then again, same thing, the left-hand side splashing down. Okay, so if we look at Becky. Okay, so your arm's coming over the water. Quite a low recovery. So open water swimming, you could do it getting that up a little bit higher. Because uh, if it's water's chopper, you can be catching your fingers on the chop. Um, so anyway, so left hand entering. And your arm is coming over, you can see it's kind of pointing over in that direction and it's kind of the outside edge of the hand is coming in. Again, body positioning will improve that when we work on those. Your arm is coming in quite level, so your elbow is coming in at the same time as your hand and then splashing down, so that splash is caused there. Okay, on the right hand side, coming in, you know, nice fingertip first, so that's good to see. Quite flat, but much better than the left much better than the left you didn't have the same splash so when you breathe see what happens this time yeah it's coming down quite flat okay coming down quite flat and on the right a little bit better but still quite flat let's see if we can find a decent hand entry to show you in fact seems we've got John Jono on here let's see if we can no let's try something else So hand entry, there we go, that's what we want to be looking for. Um, let's see if there's a video on here. Here we go, let's play this, or some of it anyway. One of the things I often get asked is exactly where should a swimmer's hand be entering into the water with respect to the position in yeah, I kind of knew this would happen. It's not um, it's not buffering quickly enough. Just give it a second to catch up. I won't play all of this because it's two minutes long, but uh, I'll give you a good idea. It's a good explanation from uh, from Paul as well. To the head. Should you be entering just by the ear and spearing straight down in the water? Or should you be trying to reach as far forward as possible before the hand enters into the water? Now let's consider those both those scenarios. Entering right by the ear and spearing down will either lead you to losing that entire part of the catch and pull through or as we see a lot of people doing spearing in by the head and then trying to extend forward ending up dropping the wrist and applying the brakes here and inadvertently slowing yourself down by putting those brakes on however Let's go to the other end of the spectrum. A lot of people are told to reach as far forward as they possibly can. 
This is similar to what you, some of you guys are doing, coming down quite flat. Unfortunately, when somebody does this, we've got to remember that one of the key components of an efficient freestyle catch and pull through is to remember to always have the elbow higher than the wrist and the wrist higher than the fingertips. If you overreach into the water, chances are you're going to end up dropping that elbow or simply pulling through or pressing down on the water with that straight arm. This just gives you lift at the front end of the stroke, causing your bum and legs to drop down at the back, and it's not very efficient at providing you with that forward propulsion underneath the body there. So really, the answer to that question, where should my hand be entering into the water, is it's going to be somewhere between that spectrum of entering at the head and fully extended out in front. We need to make sure that we're entering, and I normally recommend it somewhere between, being between the elbow and the wrist here of this outstretched arm, if it was staying outstretched, into the water. The main thing is to always make sure that the fingertips enter the water before the wrist and the wrist before the elbow. That will give you a much better chance of setting up for an efficient catch and pull through underneath the water than if you were simply entering too soon and entering too steeply or overreaching and end up pressing down on the water there. Okay, so um, it covered a lot of points um, that, that I kind of mentioned earlier really. So it's a case of um, your hand entering in the correct position um, and extending forward and not pushing straight down um, and not entering too flat. But again, body positioning, getting your body in the correct position will, um, will set you up for a much better catch anyway. Okay, so finally then, if we go to Emil, Okay, so your hand is coming across the surface of the water quite flat, similar to Becky, not too bad, but quite low on the surface of the water. And then, similar to what Paul just said actually, kind of overreaching almost, so your whole hand is flat on the surface of the water, your hand is still there, and then it comes down, sinks down in one go. On the right hand side, thumb first entry, we need to try and straighten that out. and then. Upper arm entering the water first, and then forearm, and then the hand is coming down last. Okay. So it needs to be spearing into the water with your fingertips first. Let's see if we can. Uh... So his hand is actually quite low over the surface as well. He's a pure pool swimmer. When we're talking about open water swimming, you're better off. Think about Johnny Brownlee and people like that. Their hand recovery is much higher against the water. Higher. It's more of a swinger kind of style and more like a windmill almost. He's a pure swim, um, pool swimmer, this guy. So he doesn't need to have much clearance above the water because he's always swimming in a nice flat pool. Anyway, so the hand comes in. Nice high elbow, and if you look at the position of his hand, spears into the water, hands into the water first, so elbow above wrist, above hand, enters the water, stays nice and high, doesn't come up, stays nice and high and flat, and then when the time is right, he bends his elbow and then pulls through. Okay. Same on the left hand side, fingertips enter the water first, his hand's slightly twisted but only slightly. Fingertips enter the water first and then the rest of the arm stays forward and then the pull through starts. Okay. Okay, so the final thing we're going to look at is the, um, is the pull through underneath the water. What I haven't done on this video is go through a load of drills with you because I can go through the drills with you on the um, at the pool side. Um, and the drills, 
it's all very well being shown the drills, but you need to really do them yourself and then be given feedback while you're doing them. Um, but again, come and speak to me and we can go through those. Uh, but as I say, I should cover them anyway. So under the water then, let's try and find out. We want a bit more of a head-on view now. Don't know whereabouts in the footage it was now. Let's see what we've got here. It's me walking forward, you don't want that. Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to be Steve. So what I'm looking for here is the arm positioning. Okay, now what we want to be seeing here is that lead arm entering the water and extending forwards. Uh, let's get it a bit closer. Okay, so what I'm, when we see when Steve breathes, his arm enters the water and is pushing down, rather than staying nice and high, it's pushing down and it's straight. Okay, now that angle, just to give you an idea, that from the elbow should be 100 to 120 degrees. Okay, so if I try and find, let's try and find a um, good clip. Uh, I think Cassie Patton's got a decent clip on here. Let's try this one. There we go. That's what we're going to be seeing. Okay. So if we measure Cassie there, there you go, between 100 and 120 degrees, falls back pulls back in that position okay same on the left hand side see her arm enters the water she's breathing so she's doing the same as what you're doing here Steve um, so she's breathing the arm is high okay you're breathing the arm is right down in the water she starts the catch she puts the head back in so as she starts to rotate her head back into the water you can see her hand is in this perfect setup for the catch whereas yours is pretty much under your body at this point so you've already lost all that opportunity to pull and pull the water back okay so on the on the other side as we know that hand is entering quite flat and is pushing fingertips I can see the palm of your hand if I can see the palm of your hand that means you're pushing forwards that means you're putting the brakes on okay Cassie's hand downwards so always should be there always be shoulder above elbow above wrist above fingers okay shoulder elbow below shoulder below wrist so that's a case of working on things like skull number one which is the high skull um, and doggy paddle um, and the hand entry cause you know when we look at the body positioning will will improve all that so if we uh, delete that off, delete that off, and then we have a look at Steve, sorry, um, Mark. Yeah, I don't know where your footage is, Mark, of you under the water. You can see your paws there. See on the left hand side, pause, pause, pause. So what we want to be doing with you, Mark, is getting rid of that, getting rid of that pause. Let's find you again. Let's wait for it to catch up. So getting rid of that pause, because at that point, so if you look at the difference in body position, yeah, you saw your head position, so you're breathing, you're breathing there, 
At that point, the hand should be out in front of you, high elbow coming into the catch, whereas it's kind of falling down, so you've got this down with pressure rather than, if you look at Cassie here, she's pulling back. Whereas yours, Mark, is pushing down, so your hand is pushing down and then slipping through the water. Okay, again, if we push that back, she's pushing backwards. All that pressure is pushing backwards, pushing backwards through the water. Whereas if yours, and again, it's the same, similar, all of you have got similar kind of traits, really, similar characteristics. What this is actually doing is, is it's pushing down, creating lift at the front end, making your legs sink. So at this point, the elbow should be up here. Okay, and then you'd have that kind of position. You'd have that kind of position here. So pushing down. Pushing down that way, still pushing down. There's nothing actually pushing you forwards at this point. There's a little bit of, from your elbow maybe, a little bit of pushing backwards there. And then what actually happens is your hands slip straight at the water this way, up and out, okay? Let's see if we've got you coming towards the end. I might have an underwater shot. I'll have to see if I can find your underwater shot in a second. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There's your paws. There's you showing your palm. Looking forwards a long way. You're looking up this way. If you were to look down a bit more, that would go up. That would improve you straight away. Okay, so hands coming in flat. Pulling all the air down, causing you to lift up the front end. And then it's a good example actually, because you can see what happens when you when you um, you don't have the support of the lead arm. Is if I can slow this right down, I don't know if this will work. If you watch what happens when the lead arm sinks, you watch what happens to the rest of the body. Let's play that through again. So the lead arm sinks and it pulls the body down. See, down it goes. See, so it get pulled down in that direction. Let's try again, have a look again. So you breathe, arm goes down, pulls the body down, okay? So it needs to stay high. Um, there's javelin drill and various other drills that we can look at to sort that out. So that's not a problem, we can deal with that. Big improvements to be had. I think these are really positive things because they're things we can really get our teeth stuck into. Um, so have a look at Becky. Now I mentioned at the beginning, and it, again, similar for all of you, stroke rates need to be looked at, and that's part of what I'm going to do with you anyway. Um, if you up your stroke rate and improve your catch, you go faster. It's as simple as that. Combine that with good body positioning, then you go faster still. So hand entry, Becky. Elbow below wrist, wrist below fingers. So we need to get that improved. Pushing down. So rather than having the elbow, you've got no high elbow, you're straight. Your arm is straight. Pushing down, pushing down. Okay. So we need to look, work, work on your catch. On the right hand side, same thing. Elbow dropped below fingers. pushing down. If you look at all this downward pressure, and it's actually downwards and forwards, so it's putting the brakes on, so watch. Down, 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 and then you start to, to straight arm. Okay. 
And then at that point, you start to get a little bit of backwards pressure. So we need to get a good positive catch. Good positive catch and a high elbow with you, Becky. And that'll make the world a difference. Up the stroke rate, improve your catch. That'll make the world a difference to you. Um, right, and Emil. Let's try and find you. That was a good shot. Right, let's uh, have a look what's happening here. Okay, same kind of thing then, Emil. So if you had a bit more rotation in there, if you had more rotation in there, what would happen? Okay, so um, if you had more rotation there, it would force this shoulder forward and your arm would extend out in front of you. Instead of what's actually happening is you're staying quite flat. So you want to be at 45 degrees there, so you want to be kind of rotated down. Again, shoulder below elbow, below wrist. So we need to get that looked at. And then what we're seeing here, downward pressure, again, causing the front end to come up and the back, the back end to sink. Straight arm, so no bent elbow. So ideally, we want to be having, so your elbow, it would be, sorry. So your arm ideally would be down in this kind of position, pulling back. So what we'd have then is we would have backwards pressure rather than, oops, <laughs> uh, rather than downwards pressure. And then it pulls, if you look at what happens there, it, the hand almost kind of slides straight back. So it gets to that point and then slides straight back, slipping through the water. Okay. So you've got to you've got to angle in the catch there, but that happens too late almost. So you're straight at that point straight at that point and then you start to bend your elbow there that's actually not too bad but what's happening is your hand is slipping back there that's better on that side but still quite flat if you look at your rotation Yeah, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. But this should be extending out in front of you here rather than being right down underneath the water. So you need to keep your hand higher in the water. See, that's a good position. If your elbow was a little bit higher, which would mean your hand would be in a better catch position but rather than the whole thing coming down in this direction. Okay, so improve the catch, um, timing as well, a little bit of timing issues we can look at. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, so yeah, I hope that's been useful. Um, I know it's not the slickest, cleanest system in the world, but it's a way for me to kind of talk it through. And I hope you all kind of gain from um, looking at other people's swimming as well and looking at the talk, listening to the comments that I give to them. Um, yeah, so um, say so I've put a four-week plan together. We'll work through all the various elements. Um, and I'm pretty confident we should see some decent changes in these strokes. It will involve putting some work in, um, some extra swims in during the week, ideally, um, to 
the suggested kind of amount is um, to improve is at least three times a week. Three times a week more or less kind of maintains what you've got. Four times a week is when you start to improve. But understandably, four times a week is, is a big demand on your time. Uh, but three times a week at least. Um, yeah, so we'll start to work through things. Give me a shout if you think this has been, uh, or give me some feedback on this uh, this particular system. What I'd normally do is whack some drills in there as well as we go. Uh, but again, I can go through these with you anyway, so that's not uh, that's not a problem. Because um, we've got video footage, we can look at it again at some point in the future um, and see how things have improved. I'm pretty confident because of some of the issues I've seen, fairly basic issues which we can address not super easily. I mean, swimming is one of these things which takes a bit of time and a bit of patience, um, but but you know, fairly easily, um, and we should see some improvements fairly quickly. So, I think that's it from me. Give me a shout if you um, if you've got any comments, feedback, questions, or all that kind of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. Cheers.